thank you so so much for tuning in today's video is another Dollar Tree farmhouse scale but this week I'm making a hanging scale if you haven't seen last week's video I made two scales using Dollar Tree materials and I absolutely love them and I wanted to try my hand at a hanging one because those at least for me are a little harder to find in stores so I really hope that you enjoy this video and stick around by subscribing to this channel once you hit that subscribe button we instantly become best friends did we just become best friends yep and please hit that notification bell so you know every time I post a video. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start off with my base, and this is the base I purchased from Dollar Tree. But depending on the style of scale that you want, you can use many different options like this, this, and these are all from Dollar Tree, this scalloped bowl, or I found this plant hanger from Dollar Tree that already has room for hooks on the side. So I'm going to create some holes on the sides of this. I'm actually going to create four holes using this wood burning tool. Now I am going to let it heat up and you want to make sure that you're doing this in a very well ventilated area because you're going to be burning plastic and that does emit a bunch of really bad fumes. So make sure that you are outdoors or in a well ventilated area. Wear a mask if you can. And if you don't have a wood burning tool, I've heard a lot of people burn holes into plastic using a hot glue gun. So I'm just going to grab my tip and kind of make a little circle until I get the hole that I want. And I'm going to do that to all four sides. Now I made sure to position my holes close enough to the edge where I can place my hooks and I'm going to be using these Dollar Tree plant hooks. Now these only bring three sides so I purchased two so that I can remove one of the pieces from one of them and make it four. So for this I just used some pliers to kind of pull it apart, take that piece out and add that extra piece to the other plant holder by pulling it apart sliding it through, and then closing it back up. For the top, I'm gonna to use this Dollar Tree cake pan, and make sure that you're getting the cake pan and not the pie pan, since that one is a little on the tapered side. So to find the center of this, I put this on a piece of paper, traced it out, cut the circle out, and when I cut it out, I folded it in half so that I can find the center point of the top and bottom of the pan where I'm going to make my markings. And this is to add my hooks. Very, very carefully with a drill bit that was slightly smaller than my hook, I made my holes on both sides of my pan and I used two quarter inch by two inch eye bolts. I purchased these at Lowe's for 58 cents each. I unscrewed them and then screwed them into each of the holes. Now I do keep moving around the placement. This isn't perfectly tight, so you can still move everything around. But once you have it in place, you have something that looks like this. Once I was done, I took it outside to spray paint and I'm using Krylon's Metallic Silver. I'm not a huge fan of Krylon, but I have so much left over from my last tutorial. It's really cold outside, so I'm making sure to do very, very even coats. So I'm doing one side first, letting it dry for about half an hour, and then flipping everything over and doing the inside. When it's really cold out, spray paint tends to run, so you wanna make sure that your coats are really light and really even. Once everything was completely dry, I was left with my base, my top piece, my chain, and I forgot to show this earlier, but this is a plant hook that I purchased at Dollar Tree. This comes in a pack of two. I'm gonna give everything some details by adding some pewter gray from Apple Barrel and some golden sunset. I'm using a makeup sponge, which I also purchased at Dollar Tree, and a little bit of water. Once I had my gray paint into a little bowl, I grabbed my makeup sponge and I soaked it in a little bit of water, pressed it into my paint, got the excess off, and then started dabbing it into my bottom piece. Now usually you see a lot of rust on the edges of certain items or wherever there are details, but you can always pull up pictures of anything that's rusted to get an idea. 
and just follow that. So I'm doing the darker color first and letting it dry. If you notice that you have too much of the color, you can always take the dry part of your brush and buff it in, or you can wet your sponge a little bit more to kind of make it look a little bit more unison and not like you're sponging on color. So this is going to be a little time consuming if you are a perfectionist, but trust me, it looks so good in the end. So you can always go back later with a darker gray and go over it if you don't like how it turns out. This is really, really forgiving because there's no right or wrong way. So I went ahead and did this to the edge of my top piece and the back. This is going to be the back side of it, but you want to make sure that it's covered as well so that it looks nice and authentic. And I'm going to do the same thing to my chains. My chains is where I want the most rust. I just want to make sure that they are not shiny. Even though we did use a metallic spray paint, I do want to dull it all down, but the metallic spray paint was so that everything is just one solid base color. So with this, I am just going to go ahead and dab a bunch of the color in because the more worn that it looks, the better. So now is when the real fun part begins because we are going to create rust using Golden Sunset and Cinnamon. I did not come up with this technique. This is all over Pinterest. My friend Simply Handmade has used these on her pumpkins before. I'll link her below. But I am doing this with a yellow undertone because I think it looks a lot more realistic. Whenever I see rust, I always see fading orange and yellow at the bottom. So that's the look that I'm achieving trying to achieve here. So I'm pressing in my brush on the edges and then fading it downward and sprinkling my cinnamon on top so that it looks like it's fading. I'm going to add this to the edges and to random details. Honestly, the more places you add this, the more realistic, worn, and rusty this looks. You can always add more if you feel like you don't have enough. For my chains, I wasn't delicate at all. I literally just sponged color on and then took all of my leftover cinnamon that had fallen and pressed it directly into the chains, making sure that I paid extra attention to the bottom pieces and to the top. For the top piece, I think this is the piece that I added the most rust to because my scale face does look rather rusty. So this, I just sponged a bunch of the yellow onto the edge and rubbed my cinnamon in. I'm not doing anything on the inside because you're not going to see that, but I am doing a whole lot on the back of this so that this can look realistic if the scale is turned around or you can see the back side of it. To create my scale face, I used some Dollar Tree poster board, but of course you can use whatever you want. And I printed this image off of Google. It had a lot of nice rust spots, but please be aware that if you are printing an image off of the internet, most images are copywritten or have a logo that you're not allowed to use. So you're not allowed to use this if you're trying to sell these scales, you're better off photoshopping your own. So I grabbed some Dollar Tree Mod Podge and a foam brush and I spread that evenly on my poster board and then pressed my scale in. I worked my way from the middle out to make sure I get all the air bubbles out and then I added a layer of Mod Podge up top. In my last tutorial, I added some sheet protector on top, but that's up to you if you want to do it that way or not. Once it dried, I went ahead and cut that out. I did do two layers just in case I wanted to paint on top. I didn't want to ruin my scale face. Then I placed it directly on top of my top piece. Now this is why I put it on poster board paper. If I would have just kept it on regular paper, it would have caved in but I wanna make sure that the zero is lined up to the top. Now, once it's lined up, I'm gonna go ahead and secure it using hot glue, but of course you can use Mod Podge or super glue, whatever glue you feel comfortable using. Just make sure that you get all of the edges down because if you leave any gaps, it's gonna be really apparent that this is fake. So after I was done, I assembled everything by adding my chains to those holes and I 
think they fit perfect. I'm so glad that I positioned them a little higher up. And as you can see, the rust spots look fantastic. So now I'm gonna take that and hook it onto the bottom. I don't have to do this, but with my hands, I went ahead and closed that hook just a little bit so that it wouldn't slide out. And then I added my S hook up top and bam, I had a beautiful and affordable farmhouse hanging scale. If you like this video, please don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And as usual, thank you so, so much for watching. I appreciate you all so much and I will see you on the next one.